Hello, welcome back to another episode in CSC 263, Database Management Systems at Adelphi University. For the last few videos, we've been exploring database security. In the first video, we talked about um, how we want to protect the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the data stored in the database. And in the second video, we spoke about the roles that authentication, access control, and authorization have in this process. This time around, we'll talk a little bit more about database encryption um, and specifically why um, encryption is sometimes hard to achieve in a database. So first of all, quickly define what encryption is. Encryption really isn't more than a transformation of data from a comprehensible format to an incomprehensible format. That sounds a little abstract, um, but basically what we can do is take meaningful data, for example, a social security number, and then change it in such a way that if someone looks at that changed data, it makes absolutely no sense and the social security number is not recoverable. Um, unless, of course, you have the magic sauce, which in terms of encryption means you need to know what encryption algorithm was used and more importantly, what key has been used. And that's immediately where our issue um, often takes place. In encryption, uh, in general, uh, the, the knowledge of the encryption algorithm or the cipher um, is completely public. We know exactly what cipher was used to encrypt the data. It's the secrecy of the key that is a more important one. Um, so what we want to store in the database is data in that encrypted format, in, uh, but that it can be reverted back to a readable format for those users who are authorized to have access to that data. Now, if we look at a computer system, encryption can be used at many different layers of that system. Remember, when we talk about computers, we usually deal with abstraction. We may talk about the computer, but we don't necessarily mean the physical hardware of the computer. We might be talking about, you know, an application running in its operating system. And those are all different levels of abstraction that we're dealing with. When we're dealing with cryptography, we do the same thing. We could, for example, encrypt data at the disk level. Um, so if the disk, the physical device on which the data is stored is encrypted, then Anything that sits at higher levels of abstraction may be completely unaware of that, but also means that they don't have to take that into consideration when doing their operations. Disk encryption has its place, but if you're dealing with a running operating system who has legitimate access to the disk, it doesn't add a lot of protection. Disk encryption is primarily used for uh, prevention against theft of the physical storage device. It's tied to a computer. Next up is the volume level, um, or maybe if you're more familiar with the term, a partition, um, in which I can take a disk and I can either subdivide it into smaller partitions, or maybe I can take multiple disks and glue them together in one larger volume. I could apply the encryption at that level as well, not necessarily at the disk, but at that intermediate layer. Likewise, I can go into the file system. For example, if I'm running my database on a Windows system, I could turn on NTFS layer encryption. The disk and the volume don't know anything about the encryption, but now the operating system maintains that for me through its file system drivers. Or I can go uh, encrypt each individual file on my disk, where again, the file system itself is unaware of the encryption, but the files themselves are protected. It's the job of the database management system to take care of this for us and to choose the most appropriate level of protection. Most likely it will happen some file level encryption. Um, but again, where it happens is from a usability or a user's perspective, not that important. Um, of course it needs to happen. Now within the database, I can also use encryption and then let the DBMS figure out where to store that on disk. I could, for example, encrypt my entire database. That means all the files that are associated with this database are fully encrypted with some form of a key. But maybe that's too much um, overhead or maybe it's too difficult to do. And I might say, okay, let's encrypt data at the table level. You know, this table is so important, I have to protect all the data in it. 
more likely is that we have only a few columns um, in a database, you know, for example, the social security number or, you know, uh, credit card details or bank account details. Those are things that you might want to really protect that extra layer, but they don't necessarily mean that they're stored in a full table. We might be interested in individual columns or maybe even only in specific rows or cells. Now, the database management system can do that. Um, or I should say most database management systems can do that because again, these are implementation specific decisions that we're making. And as we choose a database management system and we know what our encryption requirements are, we have to take that into account as well. There are some concerns here. First of all, it means that we have to have a key um, and the key is important. And you could say the key is key. <laughs> um, Without the key, we cannot decrypt the data, which means that we cannot lose that key. But it also means that with the key, we can decrypt the data. And that means if we're keeping the key in the database or right next to the database, if I am under attack, an attacker can just make off with the database and its key. And at that point, all the encryption that I applied becomes absolutely useless. So key management, where do I keep this key um, so that the database management system can access it, can use it, but it cannot be exfiltrated from the system is an important one. Um, and so that is a good decision and a good mechanism to look at when you're choosing DBMSs. If you're going to keep your key right with your data, worst case scenario, even in your database, then don't bother encrypting at all. The, the use of encryption is, um, is mathematics, so it's computationally somewhat intense. Most encryption algorithms are sometimes even designed to be computationally intensive so that they can be resistant to what's known as an exhaustive key search or a brute force attack. But it also means that the more cryptography I'm going to be using, um, the more overhead my DBMS is going to have on the system. In many cases, it's not really measurable if you're dealing with a small database, but if you start scaling up, even a 5% overhead becomes noticeable. And so it's something to keep in mind. Don't just encrypt necessarily everything uh, unless you're willing to take that hit in overhead and you have budgeted for it. And maybe uh, more important than that, um, encrypted data, it's not searchable. You know, I cannot do a simple select all from something because that would mean that every time that I run a query, the database management system will have to go in, decrypt whatever data I might be searching, compare it, and then move on to the next one. So it can be done, but it has to be decrypted first. I also can't solve it by creating an index that is plain text because then why would I have done this in the first place? And then lastly, and that fell off the slide here, is a comment about backups. If I make a backup of my database, which I should be doing on a regular basis, and we'll talk about that in a future video as well, if the data is encrypted, I also have to make sure that I keep the key with that backup in order to protect it. Lastly, keys need to change on a regular basis just to make sure that if they are compromised, they cannot be reused. So there's a lot of overhead that comes with cryptography. Now, that's not to say that we should not be using cryptography. Um, cryptography is hard, um, and these are just high-level discussions about cryptography so far. On top of that, if we decide that we are going to have to encrypt certain fields in our database, we also have to figure out, for example, what ciphers we're going to be using. Um, who has access to that data? Who has access to the key? Where is the key kept? Um, the problem with ciphers is, though, that they change, which means that over time, encryption ciphers that were once deemed strong enough might no longer be strong enough, say, five or ten years from now. All of that makes designing databases that use encryption to protect data tricky and hard and not necessarily something that we want to talk about in detail for this introductory course. In the next class, we'll talk a little bit more about network and application security and its role in protecting data in the database.